here's one of the first ones. Upend your world, somebody said, but somebody else said, none of that new stuff is going to get approved. So, <laughs> so yes, isn't the there really barriers. a job security, if you will, in the dysfunctionality of our innovation pipeline? So Intuitive is a fairly well-established company at this point, which probably would not have succeeded in the current regulatory climate. In other words, you wouldn't have been what you are today if the regulatory climate of today had been were like when this you in the 90s. Whoa. And it is a it's a real tragedy because there's a lot of really great startups that are really struggling to get VC funding because they are looking at these long regulatory pathways and they're not going to be able to get through them. And and so it's it's very much stifling innovation. That is frightening. Here's another question we got from the audience that was fantastic here. Somebody asked, might we end up having surgeons in your system that are actually not doctors, but are just highly trained surgeons, really good at the mechanism of, of surgery without having to go through all the medical school years in, in the same way that in other fields, you know, you can be a crane operator without, a master crane operator right. without knowing much about architecture or building. That kind of change is going to have to happen with an even slower moving group than the <laughs> FDA, which is the accreditation process for physicians, because we've been training the same way since Halstead, and it hasn't changed very much except for the 80 hour work week. <laughs> so um, possibly, but I think that would happen outside of the United States sooner rather than here. So uh, we can't let it go without talking about the dog. So we have bomb-sniffing dogs, and if you think about it, bomb-sniffing dogs are designed to smell these tiny molecules that are parts of bombs. Uh, we had rabbits in hospitals for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So are animals coming back here as sort of biomarker sniffers for cancer? I mean, might there be a partnership between the animal world uh, and humans, again, that's far deeper th in the medical sense than perhaps the seeing-eye dogs and the few other you know, companion animals we have now? Potentially. I, I mean, I think the, the dogs being able to sniff and smell on the breath lung cancer was a, a fascinating discovery that people made. And what that said to them is that they didn't know what the compound was the dogs were being sensitive to, but the dogs were excellent classifiers. So they could smell lots, you know, they'd say, this is a patient with lung cancer, this is someone who we don't believe has lung cancer, and the dog could train on the two. The fact that the dog could train meant that there must be something that would be detectable. I would say it's probably very long to train the dog. If you can figure out what that detectable thing is, then you could just go and Maybe it. we can train a dog <laughs> app on the phone. IPhone. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and do I have do cancer? It. Catherine, that was a fascinating <laughs> tour, a frightening story at the end there, but thank you very much. It was a wonderful day. Thank you.